Zambezi Zinger is the new for 2023 wooden roller coaster to open up at Worlds of Fun in Kansas City, Missouri. It's the park's third wooden roller coaster and their second manufactured by GCI, the other of course being Prowler. However, unlike Prowler, this is not a thrill ride, this is a family attraction. The overall design as well as the name harkens back to the original Zambezi Zinger which closed in 1997. It operated at Worlds of Fun for over 20 years in the exact same plot of land before being sent down to Columbia, where it still operates to this day. While I did not get the opportunity to ride the coaster at Worlds of Fun, I did get to do it in Columbia, and so in this video, in addition to reviewing the new Zambezi Zinger, I will also contrast it to the original. I'm going to talk about what works about this attraction, what does not, and what could be better for the future. Because believe it or not, we actually have quite a bit to talk about. Starting first with, of course, first impressions. I'd been following along with the progress of this attraction since its announcement, through construction and opening, and walking up to it for the first time, even knowing all about it, I was surprised how small it looks in person. Zambezi Zinger is located directly next to Worlds of Fun's Boomerang, so you have both lift hills right next to each other, and Zambezi is considerably smaller. I saw the top of it, and I was like, really? That's it? But the thing is, because of its location in the park, most guests can't see what the majority of the ride does. It's pretty much just that spiral lift hill and drop. Which, speaking of the spiral lift, this is the first and most notable aspect of Zambezi Zinger 2.0. It's really important to the park to harken back to that original lift system, even though this is a wood coaster. This is the first wood coaster to use this type of lift. It stands 74 feet high, that's about 17 feet taller than the original Zambezi Zinger. The original Zambezi also sent you around in a circle a couple more times to reach that max height. Notice how gradual that ascension is. Zambezi only needs about two and a half rotations before you reach the top. And in order to make the spiral lift hill work, GCI brought in their Titan track. So this portion of the ride is steel. This is due to the extremely tight tolerances that you have when you use drive tires going all the way up and around. Steel doesn't bend and flex like wood does. And so that's why they use steel supports and steel track. You can visibly see the shift from the steel to the wood, and you'll also be able to feel it during the ride experience. But I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Now, the spiral lift hill is not the only thing that harkens back to the original Zambezi Zinger. There's also quite a few references in the queue and with the overall theme of the attraction. When you approach the ride, you're entering a safari expedition camp. Most of the queue is unthemed and out in the sun, but right when you enter, there is a little covered area. Shows you a map of the landscape, different animals you might see. They have the actual layout drawn out, like that's the path of your safari vehicle. One of my favorite Easter eggs going back to the original Zambezi Zinger is you keep seeing these references to snakes in the tunnel. That's because at one point in time with the original Zambezi Zinger, there actually was a snake in the tunnel. Such a funny story, I love that they brought that back. I also love that you even have the Schwarzkopf logo right here in the queue for everyone to see. They were of course the original manufacturer of Zambezi Zinger. Two other fun references, but these you won't find them in the queue, it's actually during the ride. During the far back portion of the layout, you might see a zebra and lion statue. Those originally came from King's Dominion, they were part of Safari Village. Since the park did a huge rebranding into Jungle Expedition, they found a new home for the zebra and lion here at Zambezi Zinger. So let's walk through this ride experience. First, I want to start by mentioning the trains. These are the first ever Infinity Flyers from GCI. They're designed with class 5 restraints, that means these trains can do ejector airtime, take riders upside down if you want to, not on this coaster, but maybe in the future. You'll notice the original ratchet system for the Millennium Flyers is gone, instead they use hydraulics. These seats also don't feel quite as deep. Like when you sit on a Millennium Flyer, it feels like a cushion, like almost like a couch. These are more traditional like padded seats. I will give a fair word of warning, if you are a taller individual, these restraints will probably pinch your legs. I can't imagine they're going to be super comfortable for you. But that's just when you initially sit down. Comfortability is going to end up affecting everyone later on during the experience. I'll talk about that in a second. When you dispatch out of the station, you start up your spiral lift hill, and right away, the first thing you're going to notice is that this is loud. You're going to have a hard time hearing the person sitting right next to you as you're traveling up this lift. This is not the typical sound you hear when going up a GCI lift hill. I believe what makes this so loud is how many anti-rollbacks you have. Because of the path the train takes going up that spiral, you have an anti-rollback on each individual car. And so that noise is just amplified the entire time. It is not a pleasant sound. I definitely hope they're able to do something about that in the future, because yikes. So as soon as you crest over, you're going to start down your drop. Towards the bottom at the pullout, your track is going to transition from steel to wood. 
I know one of my first initial concerns is, are you going to be able to notice that transition? Is it going to feel weird? But I think because it's the first drop and you're just building up so much speed, that transition is really not noticeable. I wouldn't say this is a particularly amazing first drop. Like, don't expect any airtime out of it. This is not an airtime-centric attraction. That's going to become very apparent later on. At the bottom of your drop, you twist to the left, pop up, and bank to the right. You're back up against the ground and you get thrown to the left. This is actually a really fun transition. You're gonna notice a lot of these moments in Zambezi Zinger. A lot of that really harkens back to the original attraction. While that version of Zambezi Zinger wasn't quite as thrilling, that wasn't an airtime focused experience either. You could almost think of it like a scenic tour throughout the area, It'd glide around, take you through all these different areas, and this is doing the same thing, but just a little bit faster. 45 miles per hour versus the original 41. So at this point in time, you head back towards the spiral lift hill and you're gonna wrap around it. And right here, the track is gonna switch back again to Titan track. For this portion around the lift hill, you are riding on steel. And then as you pop out of that curve, transitioning downward, you're back to wood. And the rest of the layout from there is wood. Now I mentioned earlier how the transition on the drop from steel to wood wasn't very noticeable. This part in the middle of the ride, I think is noticeable. And not gonna lie, it's kind of weird. I'm really not sure why you would do Titan Track over just this one section. Like it makes total sense for the lift hill, but why this curve? Personally, I think Worlds of Fun should have just made up their mind whether they wanted this to be a wood coaster or a steel coaster and just do the whole layout wood, excluding the spiral lift, or the whole layout steel. So now you're entering the back portion of the layout. You're gonna rise up over the train tracks into what is an airtime hill. I personally did not really get airtime going over it, but I'll get back to that in a minute. You're back up against the ground, banking to the left. You get thrown to the right. Now you're in a tunnel. The original Zambezi Zinger had a tunnel, so of course they had to bring it back for the new one. This tunnel's tight. That is some low clearance, that's for sure. Like, you know you're going to make it, but you almost want to duck right before going in. You pop out, twist to the left, rise up into another airtime hill, which unfortunately, like the others, I did not get any airtime going over it. Now, obviously this is not an airtime centric experience, but this is one of three hills on the coaster, which it feels like should be giving air. So why doesn't it? Well, for that, it goes back to the trains. I mentioned those hydraulic restraints. To be blunt, they suck. Throughout this entire experience, those restraints are gonna continue to press down on your waist and your lower abdomen, and it gets tight. And it is not fun. You are so squished in there. There's a lot of pressure. And I think it makes it harder to enjoy this ride experience. I saw someone make a comparison to these restraints being like a real life boa constrictor. And I feel like that's a pretty accurate representation, which, okay, two things. One, I'm going to cut the manufacturer and the designer some slack because this is a prototype train. I totally understand that with a prototype, there's bound to be issues. If they're able to resolve this issue and make the experience more enjoyable for future Infinity Flyer coasters, then I think it's gonna be just fine. And I like to believe that there is a solution. I mean, there's plenty of roller coaster trains out there that use hydraulic restraints. You don't really get the same issue on those rides. The only other one I can think of that is kind of like that is Sky Rush. I know everyone complains about how painful those restraints are. To be honest though, if you've watched the channel for a while, you know that those restraints don't really bother me. I found these restraints to be much more of a problem. And I've heard from other writers that they agree. So I hope that Worlds of Fun takes this into consideration, communicates with GCI to try to get something done because if they're able to get that fixed for Zambezi Zinger, I guarantee you people will come off this ride liking it more. So we'll have to wait and see if next year is better. But as of opening year, that is by far the biggest downside with this coaster. But getting back to the layout, there's another bank turn right up against the ground. And then you have your rapid fire ending. You quickly get thrown to the left, back to the right, then back to the left, and then back to the right. And that's into your brakes. Talk about snake-like, you just feel like you're slithering back and forth, left to right. And that speed is amplified because of how low you are. Notice how most of this coaster is right up against the ground. That makes it super cool. I love that they're able to use that terrain. Personally, I think those final twists are the best part of Zambezi Zinger. So where do I recommend sitting? For me, because this isn't really an airtime experience, I would recommend the front. Usually I'm a back row rider, but typically I say the back row because of the airtime. So I think the front is the best because that's where your sense of speed is heightened, it takes the twists better, and it's smoother. And this brings me to my final complaint of Zambezi Zinger. The front is smooth, I'd say the back is smooth, the middle is not. And for being a new for 2023 coaster, I feel like that should not be the case. I've heard many people just flat out call this ride rough. And I'm not sure I completely agree with that. It definitely has an edge to it, that's for sure. Ironically, I'd say the other GCI that's just down the pathway over there, Prowler, is smoother than this one. 
But how can that be? Is it because of the trains? Well, maybe, but other newer GCIs are a lot smoother. I think about Mystic Timbers. That's one of the smoothest wind coasters you'll ever ride. It opened back in 2017 and still feels brand new. I even looked to Thunderhead. GCI recently did a full retracking on it and it feels the exact same. So what gives? Well, I can tell you that those retrackings and the newer GCIs all use those similar wood. It's called Ipe. It's a really dense, more exotic wood from Central and South America. It's way stronger than your average wood and requires less maintenance, but it's more expensive. So that means that the rides feel different. So if you've ever wondered why Mystic Timbers, Ghost Rider, and New Thunderhead all feel the same, that would be why. So why doesn't Zambezi Zinger use that track? My first guess is cost, but if that's the case, I feel like Worlds of Fun is starting to regret that. Like if you aren't gonna make the whole thing Titan track, Going with this stronger, smoother wood definitely would have been the best alternative. Instead, now you got part of the ride that is glass smooth and part of the ride which really shakes back and forth. You can especially see that here on the back row POV. Watch the train as it switches from the wood track to the steel track. I worry about how Zambezi Zinger is going to age over time. Because if this is how it is in its opening year, oof, that's not great. So overall, what were my impressions of Zambezi Zinger? I liked it, but that's probably as far as I would go. I wouldn't put it in the top three of Worlds of Fun. Prowler is by far and away still the king of this park. I do like though that this has some obvious differences from that attraction that keeps them separate. I know that was one of my initial concerns as well. You're putting two GCIs in the same park, but they don't feel the same at all. Prowler is your airtime centric experience. So that's why I didn't mind that Zambezi Zinger wasn't really about that. But I still ended up walking away from this coaster saying, all right, well, that was fun, but it didn't wow me. I wasn't dying to do it over and over again, you know? I'd put it as like a step up from Invader at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. That's a similar GCI in size. I gotta commend them on the creativity for the layout. I think the twists are by far the best thing about this ride, but I think the trains and how it rides on the track is really what's holding me back from liking this coaster more. Like, would I put it over Gravity Group's family coasters? Well, probably not. I really love the rides they do, and maybe that's the airtime fan of me that's saying, all right, well, those are a lot more enjoyable because they're always sending me up out of my seat, but they're really good with what they're trying to do. So for its overall score, I'm giving Zambezi Zinger a 7 out of 10. Did it succeed in its original goal? I'd say sort of. I think it gave Worlds of Fun another good supporting ride in their lineup. It obviously has its flaws and things that probably should have been done different, but it's a learning experience, you know? That's the risk you take when you get a prototype. I hope it gives families another good coaster that they can all ride and enjoy together, and I hope it's able to continue that legacy that was left by the original oh so long ago. So let me know down in the comments below if you've ridden the new Zambezi Zinger at Worlds of Fun. If you agree with the points that I brought up, if you think there's anything I missed, be sure to post all that down below and stay tuned for more coaster reviews here at Coaster Studios and I'll see you next time.